In the primary art classroom, how do you foster children's creativity while still familiarising them with basic skills? Ambitious projects can really extend pupils' achievements and it's possible to get surprising results. Here, art coordinator Peter Sanders shows how abstract painting can be introduced without the pupils losing concentration and the class descending into chaos. I think by this stage in a child's primary education, you would be expecting children to have some kind of creative input themselves. So decision making, actually. We, you know, I would hope that by this stage, they'll be beginning to say, I want to use this colour because I think it will create this effect. Peter's leading a year four class today, using the theme of temperature to produce an abstract painting. For most of the pupils, English is their second language, and their teacher, Dawn Morpeth, has some concerns about the lesson. My main concern is the children's behaviour. They tend to get really excited and kind of go wild. They don't do it often enough. And so when the paints come out, they just go crazy. <laughs> and the mess, the clearing up afterwards, always ends up being the teacher who does it. I'd rather do collage or pencil work, but obviously painting is part of the curriculum, so I have to do it. I do like modern art. Taking the children to the National Portrait Gallery, they take modern. And we're going to look at the cross-curricular theme of temperature, so trying to create a painting that shows the temperature. So it's going to be a bit of abstract art. I'm looking forward to working with Peter because he's an art expert, but I'm not really looking forward to the lesson, to be honest. No. <laughs> I would say to anybody who's nervous about it, don't set yourselves boundaries that are unachievable. If you set up too many possibilities, you're going to end up with accidents and the feeling that you never, ever want to do that again. It's limiting expectations and knowing that in the space of time that you've got, you're not going to be able to achieve masterpieces. Keep your objectives simple. What we're going to do today is some messy art. And given that they have a fairly limited experience of painting, it seems to me that what they need to do is to play with paint and brushes and see what happens, see what, what the materials do. If I say to my class, today we're going to explore colour mixing and the use of brush strokes, mm. they won't know what I no, mean. No. You know, the children are bilingual mm. and a brush stroke, what is that? Mm. They don't know yeah, what that is. Yeah, I think it's always good to have examples of what other people have done. Without I mean, Pete, I wouldn't have tried this abstract concept. I was quite worried about it, to be honest. Because children, when they produce something, they want to be able to say what it is. You know, even from their first scribble, someone will ask them, what is it? You know, that yellow stands out really clearly. Yeah. And I think part of it is just to show that you can represent an idea, something you feel, and showing a feeling in a painting is something that's... Yeah, it is moving it on. I mean, that to me suggests cool and that suggests heat, you know. Most of these images have got very strong mark making going on in them. So we're going to be looking at colour mixing. We're going to be looking at brush strokes. Um, taking them beyond mark making to the control of the mark that they make, the intensity of it, and how does that affect it? So, Peter, it's to create a painting showing temperature. What we wanted to do was set up the room so that as soon as the children came in, it was quite obvious something different was happening. So a palette of paint set out in front of them should be absolutely pristine. Piles of stuff that is inviting that you want to use. Kids love it. They see that pure colour and immediately want to use it. Powder paints are a much more controllable medium than poster colour. When they put poster paint in, they tend to use far too much in a squirt. It's very messy, it wastes a lot, and clearing up, it tends to be a lot messier. Two water pots down, one for cleaning the brushes in, and then clean water if we need to wet the next paint that we're going to be using. This is good quality cartridge paper, about 100 grams, of quite card-like. This paper's a lot rougher than the paper that they would write on. It takes colour well. It's very bright, so any paint that you put onto that comes out brilliant. Dawn said that there was the possibility of explosion when they came in and found the brushes and the paint and the water, so, so that they can't actually start painting straight away. We've held the brushes back. We're going to do a, a demonstration of how you might use the brushes. I think she's absolutely right. It could go badly wrong before we want it to. <laughs> We're going to start off showing them the postcards. 
it might be quite nice for them to take one and to begin to explore it. That's hot, warm, cold. We're always looking for cross-curricular activities. Hot picture. It helps them a lot because I think it consolidates the vocabulary, which is especially important in this class. They don't understand English. They look like the orange and the yellow look like, like kind of a hot like, colour. Yeah. I think it's ever so difficult. When you start a lesson and you say, you're going to do a hot painting or a cold painting, and I love the way that Dawn did that with the words and the linking of the word to the image. I thought it was very helpful for the children. This picture looks like it's really, it, it's really hot and rainbows come out when it's hot. Which word on the board do you think goes with your picture? Ah, warm, yeah. Scorching because it has lots of orange and red in it. Boiling because mm. there's lots of yellow. And we're going to ask them to rank them from hot to cold. A very cold picture. We pop them down. It'd be quite nice to do it right the way across the carpet. I just want to show you that painting with powder colours doesn't need to be a tall, messy... And An example of where mess is minimised is yeah. the way that we're going to teach them to mix really their colours. I think it gets the children focused on the need for real care. Onto the sponge. Now I want some clean water. Where shall I go next? Wipe it on the sponge. Yeah, I'm going to... It's important that the brush, before it goes anywhere near the powder paint, is dried on the sponge. We talk about going swimming and then coming out and drying on the towel so that when you walk through the dry sand, it sticks to the hairs on your legs. <laughs> I think children always like order. And if they know that this is the way you do it, I think you'll probably pick up children saying, no, you've not, you've not used the sponge. We're going to start painting any second now, but do you remember, don't tell them what you're doing. Because at the end of the lesson, we're going to look and we're going to see, well, who's painted hot and who's painted cold? And we don't want to see any pictures of the sun, but we might want the colour of it. I think it's dangerous to say you can do what you like. If you said that in a PE lesson, you'd be heading for real trouble. And I think the same's got to be true of art. I think you've got to have some boundaries. What you need to think about is your brush strokes well? and also think about mixing colours as well. We use some of that. When it comes to things like changing water, children are really worried about having dirty water, but we have that clean water always there. That avoids moving around the room. That's where mess happens. I think calmness is the order of the day and, and removing the offending item. Can you look this way? Do you remember, you're not meant to be drawing something, you're meant to be representing, not drawing the sun and flowers and say this is a sunny day. <laughs> you do lots of shapes with the brush. You can do, like, wiggly lines, straight lines. And once it's dry, maybe you can put different colours in here and it won't go all over the place. As I walk around the lesson, I think it's really important to, to move quickly and to keep on moving, just not to, to dwell on any one thing at one time. They remind me of, like, tropical colours. I think what you've got to do is to be really sensitive to what's going on with the children. There was a load going on about identity. In Turkey, the clouds turn like pink human beings. That's like sunset. Children say, where I come from. And I would suspect that they don't get very many opportunities to explore that. In Africa as well. You could even start the lesson, where I come from. So what are the colours, where I come from? Like a very musical country and everything. They don't... That is a very musical painting. Oh, it looks yeah. like there's lots of musical notes on that. That's a Nigerian hot day. Yeah. The little boy from Somalia. Something really strong is going on there. I think it'd be really great to look at that and say, what's that blue? Because, God, it's different from everybody else's. I think that every lesson is a surprise, especially if you're working on a, an abstract notion like this. I see something happening and I think that's what we ought to do next. Like the girl who used blue. She used nothing but blue. So maybe in the next lesson we would kind of hone in on you're only allowed to use blue. So really pushing the boundaries of what they might be able to do. 
An abstract picture is more about ideas. And my picture that I was doing was supposed to be a warm day. I generally gave a few encouraging comments, but I deliberately didn't say a lot because I didn't want them to be influenced by my comments. This thing looks like a door, but it's not. It's like a path and loads of little paths coming off of it. I just got some little bit of powder, then I like just done that and it all gone over. Then I just like done it. I don't know what it is. It's supposed to be furry and hot. I told you I knew it went really smoothly, I think, because it was very well prepared. There were very minimal opportunities for them to spill water. I have used really tall pots of paint before and with really long brushes. I mean, it's, it's going to happen that they're going to fall over. As soon as you see somebody has finished, it's quite a good idea to get them to start doing their own clearing. And once they've done their clearing, you can give them a specific job. You need to clean your uh, mixing tray like this. You just need to get it as clean as you can, OK? And then just clean out your brush. <laughs> I was quite surprised, cos in previous painting lessons, it's just been an absolute mayhem. But we went through things step by step, and then I'd said to a few people, you collect sponge, you collect mixing trays. The children love to help. They're really enthusiastic, and if there's a job going, they'll all burst to get it and it teaches them to be responsible. I don't wash at home, though. That is a fabulous clearing up job, Well, the thing is good about tidying up is we get congratulated by the cleaner because she doesn't have to come in here and clean up. The biggest problem, I think, is running out of time to stop at the end and talk about what's been done. Very often, the art is done, it goes up on the wall, and the time to discuss this it is has beautiful. gone. There's got to be time for reflecting. A hot painting, maybe like for outside, because um, there's lots of greens. Hmm. There's a little blue bit of paint, and it looks like it has a knob on it. And he's saying if we go through there, it's like um, a big castle. It reminded me of snow, mm -hmm. because she's used lots of blue and white. Mm -hmm. I think that with a lesson like this, there is much more sense of the children being in control of their own learning. And what they produce at the end is completely different from what everybody else has done. Really hot and scorching. Mm, I like Some of that them word. described it, it as scorching, scorching, burning, tropical. The language that comes out is um, really useful. Who can guess what does abstract mean? You can, like, tell a story from it and you can look at it any sort of way, you can imagine it any way. Lots they might not have been able to explain what abstract meant, but I think they knew what it was getting at. They were beginning to understand abstract art. Like, this it would be fire, and like, this would be like the wind blowing... Building up from lesson to lesson key skills is essential. So a lesson should be spent on mixing paint thinly and thickly, just seeing how, how brushes work. First I learned how to mix colours. It's like with writing. They don't do joined-up writing when I they've learned, only just learned letters. And I learned how to use the brush. I'm much happier about taking an art lesson, and I think I would take on board the level of planning that we did for the preparation and the clearing up. If you're on the right track, you know what to do, and um, nothing can be messy. I learned how to paint showing the temperature. <laughs>